The Mixed Mornings and More podcast with Steph and Sean. Now available daily. Good morning, world. Good morning and happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. It's August. It's a new month. It's August. I was like, yeah. Uh, It's the second and it's 2022 and it's 531 right now. Good morning. Good morning. You're saying a lot of surprising things this morning. Not only did you say it was August, but you also said it's Tuesday, but it feels like a Monday. Like, man, we're already two days into the week. I love it. I'm coming up with a, a a small, tiny little invention for phone companies, and they can just take it. Okay, very uh, kind of you. Yeah, it's just with uh, Monday being a stat holiday, um, I think phone companies can just have something where they track your location like Tim Hortons did, uh-huh. but for good. <laughs> But for good, okay. Yeah, and they can just see where you're living and then apply all the stat holidays to your alarm. Oh, okay. I get it. So they're just like, you're in Canada, obviously. Yeah. Uh, Monday was a civic holiday. Obviously, in Alberta, you get the family day on this yeah. 15th around of February. Yeah, because some thing. provinces have a different, some territories have a different. Uh, so it'll just track your location. Be like, oh, I see you're in Alberta. Do you want to turn your alarm off for the stat holiday Monday? You'd be like, no, I'm working. Or yes, I'm not working. Okay. Can I tell you something? Sure. This actually happened to me once. What? One time when I was going to bed, my phone said, I see you have a stat holiday tomorrow what? and you usually turn your alarm off. Would you like to turn your alarm off? This is okay. Wow. Okay. Well, now I feel like an idiot. It, don't because it never happened again. It was a fluke. <laughs> and I, every time, I never turn my alarm off. Did you do it for this yesterday? Did I wake up at 4 a.m. and say, oh, forgot no. to turn my alarm off? Yes, I did. Did that happen on Friday when I was on holidays? <laughs> yes, it did. No. Two weeks ago when I was off no. for an entire week, did my alarm go off every day at 4 a.m.? <laughs> yes, it did. <laughs> I never remember when I'm awake. I remember at 4 a.m. that I'm like, oh, my my gosh, I don't have to get up right now, but Brutal. I don't remember when I'm awake enough to be like, let's make sure this doesn't happen again tomorrow. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll try and text you because mine didn't go off and then we'll try and fast forward this into the phone companies so it never happens again. What a friend. Thanks, Sean. <laughs> I had such a busy weekend just uh, going to events, working, volunteering, all that good stuff. Wow. What a flex. Okay. Come, yeah. Come uh, Sunday morning. I thought I had to wake up and go do something again that I woke up in like a straight panic at eight in the morning. Sweating at eight. Oh, no. Oh, it was the worst because like Friday you were on holidays. I hope you enjoyed it. I did. Thank you. Thank you for (laughs) Are you going to tell me that you worked really hard on Friday. I worked so hard. And then I had to be on. (laughs) I was on location at Legacy Dodge, hung out with the boys there, which was awesome for the afternoon. And then I just rested for the night. And then I had to set an alarm for Saturday morning because that new thrift store opened. Yeah. What's in store YMM? That was a. I actually went to check it out this weekend Mm -hmm. while I was on holidays. Pretty cool. Yeah. So I helped uh, with the grand opening right there. And I was helping open it with the station and everything. And then so I set an alarm for that. And then uh, Saturday afternoon, just kind of relaxed and had a nap afterwards and just all the good stuff. And then Sunday came along and I thought I had to keep on doing things for some reason. My (laughs) brain just did not shut off from Friday and Saturday. And I woke up out of the blue in the morning and I just thought like... I had to be doing something. So what did you do to like calm your fears? What made you say like, actually, no, this is my rest day? I, uh, <laughs> well, first, usually I went into my iPhone calendar and then usually I have all my events listed in there. And then when I checked that, there was nothing in there. I'm like, no, there has to be something. And then so I went into the work calendar. Wow. And then I checked the work calendar and I was just like, okay, I don't think there's, I, I don't see anything in here and I don't have any missed calls and I don't have any text saying, where are you? And then so I was just like, you know what? I'm just turning my phone over and I'm going back to bed. Oh, and that man. seemed to work. I'm glad you said turning your phone over. I thought you were gonna be like, I'm just turning my phone off. So if I am missing something, <laughs> I'm gonna keep missing it. I'm going back to sleep. <laughs> That's right, you won't hear from me until 1 p.m. I'm sleeping. Went out with my husband on Sunday morning to run some errands. We walk around Canadian Tire for far too long. (laughs) And we are in the checkout and we've scanned everything and we're about to pay when he says to me, oh my gosh, I don't have my wallet. And I like looked down at my pockets and I was like, me either. But what's the you? Oh, I thought he was just pulling the, I guess you got to pay for it. No, no. Both of us didn't bring our wallets. And I actually did bring my purse with me. 
but my wallet was in the pocket of the last coat I wore. Mm, yeah, yeah. Oh, when you take the cards out and you put them in the in the the pants or the shirt or yeah. the jacket. You're like, I don't feel like par- carrying a purse. I'm just going to throw this in my yeah. pocket. Oh, excellent. Okay, so, so you were in Canadian Tire and you were buying things? Yeah, and then we had to take it over to the at the self-checkout lady and be like, sorry, we forgot our money. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then we left and I was like, oh, let's grab some iced coffees on the McDonald's app. <laughs> no need for a wallet there oh, on the McDonald's right. app. Because it has your banking information. Yes, but then promptly forgot about the no wallet problem. Drove over to the gas station, oh, and we like goodness. were like, "All right, this is the cheapest one. Perfect. Yo. Let's get gas." <laughs> and then both of us were like, "We don't have any money." <laughs> and then we tried to stop here, and then we tried to stop. Like, what else did right? you try to stop? For? It was it was Steph and Sky on tour. How many times can you be reminded that you don't have your wallet before you remember? Yeah, don't have your wallet. <laughs> yeah, knowing you're a guzzler of a car, I'm surprised you didn't have to fill up with gas. Well, like, we wouldn't have tried. been able yeah. to. We had to call a friend. Excuse me, can you come and pay for our gas? Yeah, it probably would have been me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we are two days into the best month of the year. Steph. I am really glad you feel like that because I need some positivity around this month. You, you, you're not a big fan of August over there? I just feel like it's a countdown to cold. Like it's like every day gets a little bit more chilly. You lose a little bit more mm, light. And then yeah. at the end of the month, you're suddenly back in work mode yeah. for another 10. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. A little bit. Okay, give me some positivity <laughs> though. I don't want to end on that note. I was just going to say August is great. You start off with a long weekend. Okay. So like you go right into it. And you're already feeling great about the month of August because you have the August long weekend to, to start it out with. There's some optimism. Thank and then, you. And then you, you have great weather for a majority, if not all of the month as well, because you're still on the back end of summer. And like it's still going to be mid-20s next week, full of sun. Okay. So that's also absolutely fantastic. Um, I have holidays in August, so that also helps out a little bit. I have days off coming up for the next two weeks, which is just great in and of itself. Humble brag, lucky guy. Uh, Sports, a lot of sports are starting up as well. We have uh, uh, soccer, the Premier League starts up this weekend, which is great. You would be excited about sports. Uh, College football starts (laughs) up at the very end of the month. Do not wish away my final month of summer here. (laughs) So end of month, college football, uh, NFL preseason, I think starts up this week, maybe next week. So football starting up on both levels, NFL and college football. You got uh, European football starting up this weekend. And then it's just nice. Like I've run over my list here, but um, August top, top of the order for me. Okay. So in the glass half full, half empty of summer, you're saying that the August, you're looking at it as half full. Yeah. Overflowing even maybe. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It it outshines July and June for sure. (laughs) Surefire sign it's August is that I had to turn the lights on for the first time since April yesterday. Oh, interesting. I've never really noticed that, but you're so you're correct in that. Yeah. So like usually (laughs) it's sunny out in the evenings when I'm cooking dinner. No big deal. I never turn the kitchen light on. And then yesterday, as the storm rolled in, coupled with the darker, Mm -hmm. earlier experience, I was cooking in the dark and I was like, where even is the light switch? I haven't used it in so long. Okay, but but to the world's defense, you cook dinner at like nine at night. I do. I do every single day cook dinner (laughs) at nine at night. But it's usually light out still. It's usually beautifully sunny out still and it feels like five o'clock at night like a normal person. Yeah, yeah. Um, Maybe tonight will be a little different because I don't think it's supposed to be too, too stormy. And you can maybe just push those curtains to the side and still get some sunlight in there. I'm crossing my fingers for that because at the moment I'm cursing August. Yeah, or or just cook dinner at seven, you know, like or, or six, like a six. normal person. Like what what time is even normal for dinner yeah. these days? <laughs> Hello. Hello, is this Joe? It is. Yes. Hi, Joe. This is Stefan Sean from Mix One Hundred Three Point Seven calling. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning to morning. you. <laughs> hey, we have some excellent news for you as uh, we run this contest throughout the whole year where every month we surprise one amazing uh, community member in the sports world with some acknowledgement that they probably don't seek out, but we're going to give it to them anyway. Okay. <laughs> All right. So a lot of people actually nominated you. So this is called the Community Champion of the Month, Aww. put on by Wood Buffalo Sports Connection and Direct Workwear. And so people, tons of people wrote in about what an amazing swim coach you are. So, Oh, my gosh. 
I'll read you a couple of the, the nominations. It says she's coached both our kids. Our oldest continues to swim with Mantas. And I loved having Coach Joe because she helped me get better even when it got hard. Uh, their daughter remembers Coach Joe taking time with just her out of the pool to help her with her breaststroke. And breaststroke is now one of her favorite strokes to do. Uh, their son, who didn't swim long due to COVID, loved having Coach Joe because he loves that he always got a lollipop after each session. <laughs> we always give out lollipops, yes. <laughs> and, and pretty much all the submissions just say how supportive, how attentive, how oh encouraging you are. Uh, your positive attitude oh. goes an extremely long way. And there's just a whole bunch of submissions here. Oh, my gosh. And so we just want to thank you from the bottom of our heart for being so amazing oh in the gosh. community here. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. I I'm stymied. I honestly don't I'm don't know what to say. <laughs> well, oh my God. we think you're amazing, so and we think you humbled. deserve That's a big awesome. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And because you are so incredible in the community here, uh, we're going to gift you with a fifty dollar <sighs> gift card to Direct Workwear, and also a two hundred dollar Visa gift card. Uh, oh my God! <laughs> just keep on doing what you're doing and being the amazing coach that you are. Oh, thank you so much, guys. Thank you. And and I, I I'm not usually at a loss for words here, but I am this morning. I have to admit. Well, this is thank one of you, our favorite you. calls to make. This was uh, awesome. Oh my gosh! Thank you so much. I love my kids. I love my kids that I coach. I I've done it for so long, and I I, I love every second of it. Well, so thank I thank them from the bottom of my heart. Oh. Thank you. I've seen this happen a couple times, so I don't know if it's a new scam or a six-month-old scam, mm. but something to be aware of because it's happening right here in Fort McMurray. Oh, no. What's going on? Okay, so somebody is trying to sell something for a pretty good deal. For instance, over the weekend, they were selling a TV for $80. Oh, yeah. They said, uh, I need you to e-transfer me to hold it. Oh, People no. send them the $80 yeah. after they give them their address person goes to said address to pick up the TV, Yeah, the people at, that live there have no idea what they're talking about. Were you inquiring about the TV? Is this how you found out about it? Or? No, thank oh. goodness not. I just saw somebody say, I just went to go pick up a TV oh, that no. I paid $80 for, and the person at the address said I was the fifth person oh, that's disgusting. to show up to buy a TV that they're not selling. And the thing, how do you kind of trace it back if they're like maybe using a fake number or something? Well, it's like a fake Facebook account, yeah. I guess, and yeah. then a fake email. Like, I mean, it's so easy to scam people these days, but it's oh. just so sad. Like, for the person who lives at the address, I'm sure that they were quite worried. Like, yeah. that would be pretty scary if people just kept showing up at your house expecting to buy a TV. Like, what if they decided to take it out on them that they lost $80, yeah. you know? And then there's the people who lost $80. Like, that's just heartbreaking to to trust somebody oh. enough to send them the e-transfer and then and to ha have that happen. So, uh, buyer beware, I guess. Yeah, like, I don't know. I don't I do not do as much online uh, trading marketplace, whatever, as much as, like, the next person or, say, you, for example. But every time I've done it, it's always just been, like, in person and just, like, exchanged within the two people. Yeah, I used to do, I used to send e-transfers all the time and they'd say like, e-transfer to hold it. I was like, yeah, no worries, I get it. it. Oh. Um, but I don't anymore. Now I'm like, I'm sorry, like I've been burned. Yeah. I will absolutely come and get it, but I understand if you have That's to give right. it to someone else. I don't need it that bad to mm -hmm. risk losing the money. 100%. Want more of today's show? Download the Mixed Mornings and More podcast. Now available every weekday.